So, let's get this Meshuga discography started. I'm not going to do it in order, I'm just going to, I think, just take a couple of days and um, choose a different one per day and just see what I'm feeling like at the time and just review it. So, to start with, I'm going to talk about their 1995 release, which is Destroy, Erase and Improve. Now, the main difference between this and their debut, Contradictions Collapse, is the progression that you're going to hear. Contradictions Collapse is a very um, thrash kind of orientated and um, influenced album. You can hear it right from the first song. Whereas on this album, that influence is still there because there are still a lot of like fast and like typical kind of 80s kind of thrash riffs going on with like the speed and the kind of chugging like power behind it. But there's also a lot more kind of technical and intricate guitar work going on, as well as some more progressive like clean sections being. Um, included, such as on Acrid Placidity, Placidity which is the um, instrumental on this album. And then the main difference that um, you'll hear between this and their later stuff is um, the main focus of their later stuff, of course, being on um, their eight string guitars and like the low chugging rhythms and like single note riffs and stuff like that, which um, they're most famous for, I'd say, these days. Not that there's anything wrong with that, because that's a very good um, strength of Meshuggah as well. But I really like how this album focuses more on kind of technical, kind of intricate riffs. And another um, interesting kind of um, difference between this early album and their later stuff is sort of like the guitar approach and the vocal approach. Um, on this album, I think they're still using seven strings, whereas of course now they're using eight strings um, on all of their albums and also the vocals are slightly different. Back here, they're more of a um, mid-range sort of growl, aggressive shout style, whereas now it's a more low, kind of guttural sound. It's nowhere near um, the kind of vocal style you would ex kind of expect in death metal or deathcore or anything, but there is a big difference between the vocals on this album and their later stuff. I think all the 90s albums do have a very distinct kind of um, vocal style in them in comparison to their later albums. So, one of the main reasons I love this album so much is kind of the good blend of um, typical thrash metal element elements as well as the progressive metal elements in it as well. You have songs such as The Opener, Future Breed Machine, as well as um, Terminal Illusions, where there are some very tight, very fast kind of um, rhythms going on as well as like the drums really complementing this. But at the same time, you've got some really progressive songs in here. Um, Future Breed Machine is another good example of this. You've got the siren going on in like the background of like the first riff, and um, some really cool, like, I wouldn't co quite call it a breakdown, but you could almost see it like that. And the rhythms on here kind of, kind of set it apart from their like, more thrash-based stuff. And <coughs> if you are familiar with um, Soul Niger Within, which is um, Frederick Thordendahl's um, solo project from the 90s as well, um, the final song, Sublevels, will sound very familiar to you. I believe um, the end of that song on this album is almost identical to um, the end of um, Frederick Thordendahl's album. And I think that's quite an interesting kind of parallel. Both of those are fantastic. I absolutely love Frederick Thordendale's Special Defects album. If you haven't listened to that, go get yourself a copy. It's awesome. I might have to do a review of that. Yeah, it's awesome. So, um, one of the other kind of strengths that this album has is how it's technical, but it's not overbearing. Um, Future Breed Machine, again, is another good example of this. Um, the opening like main riff is very fast and very tight, but... Um, it's funny, I, I heard this um, riff being compared to Lamb of God's Black Label, and I heard some say, guy, oh, it's exactly the same riff, you know, it's a complete rip-off. It's not. It sounds similar, I can definitely hear that, but um, I think with um, this song on this Meshuggah album, like, um, some of the notes are, like move forward a bit, so like more of the notes are being played on the offbeat, which gives it a bit more of an interesting kind of feel, something that you're not going to hear on like speed metal or something like that. And um, I guess one issue that sort of needs to be addressed with this album is the whole gent thing. <laughs> the song Soulburn, which I think is the third song, 
I've heard a few people kind of view this song as like the beginning of Gent or whatever. Some people think that this is like a good example of um, where that term comes from with the guitar tone, like the opening kind of chugs of that song. Um, I personally think that the beginning of um, sublevels is actually a better example of that guitar tone and is a nicer and more interesting sounding riff. So I'd listen to that if that's something that interests you on this album, if you're wanting to look at, I don't know, the origins of this subgenre, if you want to call it a subgenre. I personally don't. I think it's um I think it's more progressive metal, but with like certain characteristics thrown into it. I think it's a bit stupid how a new subgenre can be made because of a guitar tone. But um that's just my opinion. Um I think a couple of the weaknesses this album has is um, just the sound and production of this album, just in my personal opinion. I think there's no kind of um, mid in the guitar tone, and that's almost kind of typical for a 90s album. It reminds me of Pantera, especially the um, Far Beyond Driven and um, actually, no, the Vulgar Display of um, Power album, actually. It, <laughs> it's funny. Pantera do get um, ripped on a bit for having absolutely no mids in their guitar tone and I think this album does suffer a little bit from that and also the song Acrid Placidity, the um, instrumental song while some of the um, melodic pro progressions that the song goes through are quite nice I personally don't think it has much of an impact on the album and how it's in the like direct center of the album it just sort of weakens the flow of it a little bit but that's just my opinion but overall I would give this album a strong 8 out of 10 um, I probably should mention that this is my favorite Mashuga album from the 90s I just love like the different styles that you can hear coming through on this album and it really is where Mashuga started like getting their feet and you can really hear like where they're starting to go now I don't think you get that on Contradictions Collapse. It sounds more like a thrash album, but with some progressive elements in it. But this is a definite kind of step forward from the sugar, where you can hear where they're going. Strong 8 out of 10. Highly recommend it. Look forward to the next um, Meshuggah kind of album review. Thanks.